Now I want to look at something that I myself put together. Again, this was used, uh, this was created using Flopzilla, primarily, I believe. Maybe strictly Flopzilla, I think. And what I've done is looked at, after analyzing yeah, so many hands um, over the past couple of years of play here online, I decided to go ahead and make this table because I saw that there were a couple leaks where I was making calls um, pre-flop and getting pushed off of hands post-flop, especially out of position. So that's one of those things where um, hopefully you'll be able to avoid that loss of money by watching these videos and increase the amount of hands that you play in position, highly decrease the amount of hands that you play out of position, uh, also decrease your cold calling, especially decrease your squeeze calling, etc. So this is the likelihood that ace-king suited will hit a playable flop, and I've defined a playable flop myself as an eight-out draw or two pair or better. So that means a playable flop here would be, of course, um, it's suited, so any flush draw is already nine outs. Um, you won't have, okay, actually here you could have an open in a straight draw, but yeah, I can. On the extremes, you won't have an open in a straight draw. But yeah, it's defined again playable flop as eight outs or better, or flopping two pair plus. So, um, oh, also okay with the aces, then including top pair. So we've got here probability total with the top pair, and it's 50% of all flops. You'll hit either the top pair, two pair better, or an eight out plus straight draw. And that's what's meant with all this. Odds against hitting are basically one to one. So your probability without the ace, without pairing that ace, is uh, 36%, say, 37%. This is a probability without top pair. So you can also, with an ace-king, of course, flop top pair with your king. Right, and yeah, if you don't include top pair at all, your odds against flopping, let's just say uh, the flush draw, or yeah, in that case would be yeah, pretty much that. Um, two pair better, etc., is basically twenty percent or four to one against. So as you have ace king, ace queen, maybe ace jack, ace ten. Um, I've done this such that, you know, with the ace, especially shorthanded, you're going to be good very often. Uh, with the top pair, that could be, that's then the kicker here, the 10, the jack, or the queen, I've got in this column for you guys. So, you guys have a look at that. Um, again, very player-specific decisions, please. <laughs> and, yeah, use this at your own discretion. But this should definitely help you in in making calls, let's say, for example, you got the ace 10 suited and three guys limp and you raise it up as an isolation move and you get three bet from a fairly aggressive player on the button so you look at your odds that he's given you with that three bet and you see if you've got it here for hitting that playable flop and in that case I would definitely use these numbers here without top pair um, because, yeah, he could have you out kicked, and, yeah, I mean, if you're here without the top pair numbers, then you're, you're definitely playing it on the safe side, concerning that flop. I've got here pairing the ace with the ace at 16 and, and a half percent. Um, I believe that's correct, and if anybody has information which contradicts that, or numbers that, that prove that actually flopping any ace when you hold an ace-x hand is not 16.6 percent, .6%, say, definitely please give me a call <laughs> or uh, send me an email. Uh, top pair as such, this is all, these numbers then come from um, Flopzilla. So flopping that top pair here is 22% and when you have the ace 2, flopping the top pair essentially, yeah, 14 and a half. Um, yeah, there's a chance that three twos flop, etc. <laughs> Good, so playable flops with an ace-x offsuit. So this is ace-king to ace-two offsuit, respectively with the top pair, pair in the ace, without a top pair, and that just kind of repeats itself. As you see here, of course, yeah, opening the straight draws are highest here in the middle. 
Yeah, but again, neither here nor there. This kind of sums it all up. There is another spreadsheet that I have that very much defines exactly how these numbers came to be. Um, that's not for this video, but this table, just pause it here. I'm with the cursor so you can pause it without the little yellow bubble. Uh, print that out and definitely use that in your games. And down here we've got the same situation with basically your suited connectors. Uh, max stretch again 5-4 to jack 10. That means you can flop a straight that's above, below, and both in between. So four way straights from 5-4 to jack 10. And these are all smallers and I don't have the, yeah, the smaller numbers because it's pretty much something you want to let go of most of the time anyways. Um, as you see here, probability of hitting a playable flop when suited, including top pair, is as follows. This is the odds against flopping that. Probability of flopping that without pairing, or without flopping top pair. That means if you're holding jack-10 suited, here you're going to flop either that jack or 10 as the top pair uh, and or two pair better or eight out straight draw or better and without that top pair that drops markedly to 35 percent you need basically let's call it two to one odds pot odds to make that call if you're just banking on uh, playing on when you hit that playable flop as I've defined it previously um, probability total uh, without the top pair when you're off suited that's already 34 percent or two to one against again more or less and here's the probability when you're off-suited with these respective cards um, without the top pair at 19% more or less. So basically 4 to 1 against when you're off-suited. So I think this will definitely decrease the amount of hands that you call with, especially after re-raises pre-flop, because you're very often not going to be having these odds to make that call, and you will be playing out of position on all post-flop streets. Huge disadvantage, especially against good players. Hope that's useful. This next part is basically a suited connectors analysis. Also again here, these numbers all come from Flopzilla uh, when you enter the respective hands. And what I've got here is very interesting for you guys, which we'll get to here briefly. but. When you're holding any max stretch suited connector, and these stats are based on the Jack 10 stats suited, you're going to hit a playable flop, as I've defined it here, without the top pair, hitting eight out draws are better, or two pair are better. And that's going to happen 36% of the time with that max stretch suited connector, and you need odds of basically 1.75 to 1 pot odds to make that call if you're banking just on that. These are the respective percentages of flopping an open-ended straight draw, flopping a flush draw, as you see here, guys. Basically, 11%, 8 to 1 against, flopping that flush draw with any suited hand. Flush draw on a pair, flush draw on an open-ended straight draw, flush draw on a gut shot, da 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 da. This big flop is 17 to 1 against, and a big flop here is flopping a straight, a flush, or two pair better with the respective percentages. So when you're one gapped, suited and two gapped and three gapped, the percentages effectively go down. Even when you're max stretch suited, flopping that straight, flopping that flush, or flopping two pair better, all that kind of combined together, because of course you will play on in any of those three scenarios, is 17 to 1. You see a lot of guys calling way too damn often without the odds pre-flop with this kind of crap. I mean, not necessarily crap, it's, it's a very lucrative hand, and especially big, big pot, say, if you do hit hard, and given certain scenarios, certain opponents, but you see a lot of guys here completely missing the point with these kind of hands, especially when they're off-suited. Speaking of off-suit, this is exactly the same table when you are off-suited, with exactly the same ranks in your hole cards. Big flop in that scenario, Jack-10 offsuit is 20 to 1, and markedly worse down here. And if you're just playing, let's say, against limpers, you can pretty much adhere to this. Because, you know, uh, you're going to be getting, let's say, there's two limpers in front of you, plus the blind, you already got three, uh, uh, three and a half to 1. 
And that's, you can even call that three and a half to one with your offsuited jack-10 in position, in position, guys, because you have the positional advantage and you are getting the relatively seen odds for flopping, again, a playable flop defined as eight outs or better, or two pair plus or better. And, yeah, against limpers, you can pretty much look at this table against razors, and especially three betters, stuff like that. I've taken basically this information and put it into a very similar table based on the likelihood that the opponent will then c-bet you on the flop. And there, you can't necessarily use these numbers. Actually, you shouldn't. It was also a leak that I had. You, you need to have much greater pot odds, or at least much greater implied odds, to make such calls, especially full ring. Uh, Short-handed, again, 6 max, uh, heads up, and everything in between. That's, again... That's a much more player-specific game, but uh, I mean, especially, especially in full ring. Adhere to these numbers against limpers or really small kind of crap min raises uh, and multiple cold callers in that situation, uh, where the c-bet likelihood is very, very low. And you want to get involved in these, you know, in pots like this with these kind of speculative hands, max stretch suited connectors or also connectors sometimes, in position as often as possible. This underneath. Uh, comes from actually various websites. Uh, the ones from Tony again, this Poker Tomorrow, are right here. And that's very, very brilliant. You see here is flush straight and two pair plus odds when you're holding max stretch suited connectors. Um, you're going to hit that by the river basically 21, 22% of the time. 3.6 against. And this is the respective breakdown for that when you're holding a max stretch connector, one gapper, etc. Uh, and this comes from, I believe, Wikipedia. Or actually, you're going to find these these tables here at probably 15 sites today. <laughs> uh, I've com yeah, combined it and condensed it such that it's functional and in one little, two little tables here grouped together by hand type. So suited hands, probability of being dealt at, off-suited connectors, da 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 da, and respective probabilities for hitting certain flops. In here with aces, you have an ace, you don't have an ace, being dealt aces in general, um, when you don't have an ace in your hand, the respective probabilities against 10 players 6 and 2 that somebody does have the paired ace down. Again, again, let's look at this, guys. This is, um, like I said, against limpers, maybe relatively small open raisers, min raisers, stuff like that. You can pretty much pretty much go with these numbers um, in position again when you're on these respective holdings. And again, okay, Jack-10 suited would then, of course, apply to 5-4 suited as well, more or less. Of course, you just don't have the top pair probabilities and stuff like that, but concerning this 2-pair plus or the 8-out draw, that's why I did it like that. It basically excludes uh, the whole top pair scenario. Yeah, so you're on the kind of the safe end when looking at these numbers. And again, against limpers, good tables. <laughs> against razors and aggressive players, especially out of position, you need to look at this. Got here, probability of hitting the flop and not facing a c-bet. So that means if your opponent has a c-bet percentage on the flop of 60, that means he is c-betting three times in five flops, okay, you only have a 40% chance that he won't, and in that scenario, you need, if you plan on folding when he does see bet, if you're just playing hit to win or fit or fold poker, so to say, um, you need six to one odds with that same 10 jack suited pre-flop to make that call, expecting your opponent to bet into you at 60% of the time. And these are the respective pot odds needed when you have opponents who are going to bet, on average, c-bet 60% of the time. So this is basically the odds that you need when you're cold calling in position. And again, guys, it's much better with these hands not to be playing in heads-up pots, but to be playing in two, three, and four-way pots in order to increase your long-term expected value with these hands and definitely you need the implied odds 
to make moves like that. It's normally, you know, you're gonna even when you do hit that playable flop defined as eight outs, you're still on a draw. And as I have here, if your opponent then C bets two thirds, as he very often will, when you're on such an eight out or nine out draw, you're gonna need equity of twenty eight point six percent to make that call. And of course with the open ended straight draw, you don't have it. And yeah, there you go. Um, if you push over the top, getting two cards for the price of one, you know, <laughs> that's a scenario. And you guys can figure that out. But it is it's called speculative. This hand is such suited connectors, especially max stretch, maybe one gappers. Right? I don't like playing two gappers as much unless the table's really, really live. Uh short handed of course, yeah, different different situation, but um yeah. In general, that's that's the case, and I, I can only I can only stress this. Play these kind of speculative hands as often as you can in position, yet <laughs> again, and in pots where one or two, maybe even three players are already involved, and you are again closing or almost closing the betting with your call. That's how that breaks down. I've got here, there go, <laughs> therefore. Limp or call, cold call in that case, with speculative hands, or these speculative hands listed above, only against two or more players who have a low C bet percentage and a high went to showdown percentage, again, when you're in position. That is the essence of speculative play. If you adhere to that and take these numbers into consideration when you are cold calling, better case, over cold calling, yeah, uh, these are kind of odds you want to have going into that, and of course, you know small and mid pairs would be other speculative hands suited aces and for that of course see the previous two charts that I